In this video, we're going to be using a Jupyter Notebook to take a look at the Alpha Vantage API. And we're going to be using the Alpha Vantage API to extract the time that a stock trades at its high and its low for a day. And we're going to be using one minute trading data. Now, Alpha Vantage is one of several APIs out there that you can use to get real time trading data. It operates on the freemium model. I'm going to be using a free account. And you can go ahead and sign up for an API key by visiting this URL. And uh, we're going to be using the helper library Alpha Vantage, but you can make calls directly to the API if you like. So if you need to install the Alpha Vantage helper library, it's going to be pip install Alpha Vantage from the command line. So with that we can go ahead and get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and set up my environment by importing a few third party libraries. And we'll go ahead and run that cell. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and store our API key in a variable here. And uh, I have stored it out in a text file just to keep it private. But if you're doing this on your own, you can probably skip this step and use the API key directly. Okay, with that done, we're ready to go ahead and create our time series object. And it's going to require that you input the key and then specify an output format. And uh, I'm going to use pandas here because it's just going to be easier to work with. The output you get native from Alpha Vantage is JSON. All right, so it's just a little bit easier to work with it if I store it in pandas. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and get some data. And all these objects come with a data component and then a meta component. So I'm going to go ahead and store that in two different variables. And then I just make a call and I'm going to call get intraday. Now there's lots of different intradays that you can call and lots of different calls you can make to this Alpha Vantage. All right. And this is going to require that we get a symbol and then we specify what interval we want. OK, and I'll leave it to you to check the documentation at their website to see the intervals. We're going to use a one minute, all right? but you can get five minute, you can get one hour, you can get daily. All right, and then we're going to specify an output size. OK, and the full allows you to go back as far as you can with this particular call. And it's going to be about 10 days of data. All right, they do have an extended call that you can go back and get 200 days of historical data. But we don't need all that for this video. All right, and then if you want actual real time data, then uh, you're going to need to sign up for the the paid service all right and it's actually a partnership with a different api that allows you to do that okay so it just takes us a few seconds to get that data and then let's go ahead and take a look at what we got the first thing i'm going to do is just take a look at that meta object and you can see it tells you basically data about uh, what you just downloaded all right, so we're getting one minutes. All right, and it's last on uh, the seventh. All right, and so that was yesterday at the time of the recording of this video. All right, and these are the columns we brought back, and the symbol I'm using there is Tesla. All right, if we want to see what's in that data object, I'll first call info. All right, and so we can see the columns there, and we can see how they're named, and then we can see that the index there is a date time index. All right, so that'll be helpful for further analysis. Uh, we can see that we have uh, about 6,500 uh, minute by minute trading days uh, going back to the 28th of December. All right. And then if we just want to take a look at the actual data, we'll get the first few rows calling head. OK. And then if we just want to get a visual on that data, we can plot one of these columns. And I will plot the closing data. All right, and we'll just note that these column names are a little clunky to work with. All right, not too bad, but I'm going to go ahead and after I do this, rename them. OK, so we can see our data. All right, and yes, we can see that Tesla has gone crazy over these last 10 days. All right, and then we can see here that that period there was the weekend or it was since we have the New Year's uh, holiday incorporated here. It was the weekend and the New Year's holiday. All right, so as I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and rename the columns. And to do that, I'm going to use this variable columns. And I'm going to set the columns in the data frame equal to that. 
okay and to extract our date and time it's going to be easier if i make separate date and time columns little syntax error there but we can go ahead and see that pandas makes it easy for us to go ahead and split off the date and time and make them their own individual columns okay and so let's just go ahead and take a look at a single day here so we'll just take a look at the new year's eve and we can see by looking at the first 10 data points there are actually the first five and the last five from the 31st that it also includes after hours trading okay so that may be useful for some things but i'm going to go ahead and limit the data to just regular trading hours here when we're looking for highs and lows it's probably more appropriate to do it that way uh, because in your after hours trading you often get large distortions okay so to do that I'm going to set a new variable I'm going to call it market and I'm going to set it equal to our data all right and pandas has a helpful function in there that'll let us look at different cuts of either dates or times all right so I'm going to look at between time and it's going to be when the market opens to when it closes all right, and so that I'm not working on a slice of the data object, I'm going to make a copy. A little more bookkeeping there, I'm going to go ahead and sort it so it is in chronological order. All right, and then we'll take a look at the resulting data set we get. Okay, so we can see that we moved down from about 6,500 observations to a little over 3,000 observations uh, by doing that. All right, so now we're just about ready to go ahead and extract our dates and times of the highs and lows. All right, I'm going to do it a couple of different ways. All right, and the first way I'm going to do it is to just get the actual highs and lows by date. And so I'm going to group by here, and I'm going to group by that trade date. All right, and then normally you would just need an aggregate function here, so I could type the low on here, and then I would get the lows for each trade date. But I can also get the low and the high by tagging on this ag method, and the ag method wants a dictionary, and so we'll get the low, all right, and then we'll call min on that, and then we'll get from the high column the max. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so we can see that for each of the actual trading days there all right excluding the holiday and the weekend uh, we have the daily low and the daily high so depending on what you're doing that may be useful for something all right but i want to actually capture the minute that the low and the high occurred on each of those days so we're going to take another cut at this all right and to do this we're going to look at an actual location and then we're going to slice by a group all right, and here we're going to look at that trade date. And we're going to look in the low column. All right, and then we're going to get the index of the minimum. So let's take a look at that. And so now we can see we have all the trading data and then the minute at which the low occurs. And we can, if we check up here, see that that low corresponds to that low. All right, and so on that first day of our data set, uh, we can see that it happened at just about 11 o'clock, all right, a few minutes before 11, all right, 10 o'clock the next day, 9.41, and so forth. All right, so it looks like in this data set, at least, the low is occurring early on in the trading day, all right, and that kind of makes sense for Tesla since it was on a tear in this uh, particular 10 days of trading data. All right, and then if you want to get the max, it's basically the same thing, so I will copy that and paste it. It. All right, and then uh, we'll look at the high column and we'll get the index of the max. Okay, so as you might expect, uh, a number of these are occurring uh, later in the day. All right, but then we have some interesting things like on the first day, uh, the high occurred well before the low. Okay, so I hope that helps you get started with using the Alpha Vantage API and then getting minute by minute data and doing something that may be useful to you.